Welcome to the Bet MGM Studio and the Mike Vrabel Show. I'm Mike Keith with the head coach as it is the bye week. And yet the work continues for the Tennessee Titans getting back off the plane around midnight Sunday night to end of Monday morning. Yesterday off, but back at it today and, and really a full work week for your football team. Yeah, I think it's important that we get something done and everybody will have a plan. Um, guys, I think we're, we're you know, ready to be be here and be present and, and, and focus on things that needed to be talked about. Um, watch the game, uh, watch, watch the stuff that we did well, the, the stuff that you know, maybe we made mistakes on and then some of the things that uh, we have to, to continue to eliminate uh, and those things that show up and, and have to get, you know, put, put a stop to and, and, and get fixed. Are you working more this week than in by weeks past. Don't remember. I, I can't remember what happened last week. Mike, you have a much better memory than I do. Uh, I'm focused on the things that I think we need now. Um, so we'll, we'll get guys out there. We, we practiced today. Uh, some guys didn't do very much. Some guys did more than others. Uh, it was good to, to have the quarterbacks throw and, and get some receivers and get some DBs and tight ends and guys covering uh, and, and running routes. How quickly will you have to know the status, in your mind at least, of Ryan Tannehill as you prepare for Atlanta on October 29th? Well, he, he won't do anything this week, and so we'll, we'll proceed that, um, you know, working with uh, Malik and Will and, and see where that comes out. Um, but, but as far as Ryan's availability, we'll, we'll probably know more as we work towards next week. All right, let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six-pack presented by Seat Geek. Really nice defensive play here on third and goal at the one. Lamar Jackson's going to keep and not score. And I just I felt like our guys, you know, there's a lot of wildcat plays. There's a lot of really cool efforts in there. And, you know, this is you can take a look at Patrick Ricard and, and the guy he blocks normally doesn't make the tackle. And that was the message that I had to the team. And I think that you know, certainly on that play, Harold uh, recognized that, that he was going to be at the point of attack, did a great job constricting. The hole bounced outside, and, and those are the types of plays that uh, you know we're used to seeing from Harold. More of that is what you saw in London. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that uh, you know the, the effort, the physicality, uh, you know, again wasn't perfect, but it, it looked that he was flying around and, and, and trying to contribute and, and, and impact the, the game defensively. Next up, a real effort from Danico Autry, his 11th career blocked kick, his seventh career blocked extra point. Well, I, I, this is a play that I showed the team and said, this is why we're going to win. The, these are the things that we're going to win. Uh, they had just scored, uh, and they got a penalty going for two. They backed it up, kicked the extra point. But our guys aren't taking the play for granted. Jeffrey knocks the guard back uh, two or three yards, creates some space in there for Danico. And Danico has certainly has a knack of going in there and, and getting skinny and getting through there and getting his hand up. All right. How about a Derrick Henry King Cat run for 63 yards? It's the King Cat. And, uh, you know, just a little misdirection there with Tajay. Well-blocked play. You know, when you have guys that, that contribute and, and you try to build uh, off different plays and you know, situations that we've been in, you know, we, we're able to, to get – Tajay there is a, is a little bit of a smoke screen and you know, kind of tricked their eyes a little bit. They went back with him and you know, Derek was able to, to get into the open field and, uh, and really a lot of great efforts to, to get him there. Hit nearly 21 miles an hour, did I read that? I think close to it. Wow, that's awfully good. All right, how about an interception from Sean Murphy Bunting? Well, again, good pressure in the middle of the pocket and we, these are the plays that we have to make, the ones that you're supposed to make. Um, you know, Lamar gets a, a little 
you know, sails it a little bit and, and, and SMB is able to stay in bounds, to see it, to high point it. And, and I just almost got that high knee out of there to, uh, to get to the end zone. But again, just make the plays that we're supposed to make and, and we'll be just fine. Jeffrey Simmons helping make that throw a little bit too. Yep, high. raised it and, and obviously elevated the throw and, and the ball sailed. All right, Lamar Jackson going to get sacked for only one time in this game. But again, it's Harold Landry with something that he does very well, the hustling sack, not quitting on the quarterback at any point. No, and this is kind of a point in the game where I felt like, you know, we, had, we, were, we were coming alive. And Jeffrey's chasing, Harold's chasing. I think they all did a nice job of getting him out of the pocket. You can see there Jeffrey into the middle of the pocket. And again, third and longer, so now he's a little less – uh, inclined to, to scramble uh, for the first down and, and it's okay to get him outside the pocket and now we're able to go chase him down and, and end up getting a sack. You want to make Lamar Jackson as predictable as possible, right? Right, and, and just those long yardage situations help you. Uh, the short yardage, you know, he was able to pull it sometimes and, and that's a difficult task on, on short yardage and, you know, give them credit that they were able to put the ball in his hands you know, we came back and, and were able to do a nice job in the red zone as many times as he carried it down there. All right, let's wrap up Mike Vrabel's six-pack with a quick, quick screen to Tajay Spears. Okay, a lot of great individual efforts here, starting by Tajay, but you see Chig getting it started, Brew, NPF, and, and if you go back, I don't know if we're going to be able to, but Brew out there leading the charge, getting it knocked down, and, and these, you know, Tajay making another play in space, and you know, again, finish longer than the guy with the ball. You're going to see Peter, you're going to see Nick, and here comes Brew right there on Roquan. And, and Tajay just, you know, doing a great job in the open field. And But when you get plays like that, that are 50, 48 yarders, you know, it takes a lot of extra effort from everybody else. Good stuff, too, from NWI and Kyle Phillips on that. Yep, well. all the way down, all the way down the field. If, if you're getting that kind of hustle, things are going to start to work out. Well, right? the ball, I mean, that's how, that's the, how this game goes overall the ball is around I don't know which way it's going to bounce I can't tell you that but I can tell you if you just keep doing the things that that you saw on that film that's another play that I showed them of of why we're going to end up winning coming up on the Mike Vrabel show presented by seat geek it's time for film study on the Vrabel straight that's next stay with us Welcome back to the Bet MGM Studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. We're now at the Vrabel Strader. There it is, Coach. It has its own logo. Nice. Okay. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Derrick Henry, super run. Great job by him, but a lot of great jobs on this play. Absolutely. So, again, we talked about this formation a couple weeks ago. And base formation, right? Quarterback under center. You got 12 personnel, two tight ends, two backs, or two receivers, and, and a tailback. And a, again, we can do a lot of different things out of here play action, different run games. Okay, work the screen to Derek off this. But this is what we would call one of our bread and butter runs, okay, with Derek. And I think that you're going to see some cool things here from the end zone that I want to show you, okay? This is basically allowing us to get into a power scheme, not allow penetration. Okay, to where you're able to get some combinations, right? Working up to that player there. You get some combinations working up there. You got to find a way with the receiver to take care of for, uh, the support. But this is going to create lanes. And I want you to see the lanes and not the penetration. So Derek can hit it front side or even in this case, hit it backside. And you're going to see, you know, guys get knocked down. Peter's down. But now we're here. And, and there's Derek going through, and then now he can make a break inside or outside. It okay, gives him so options. It, it, what you're saying is he has a choice here? He, he does. Okay. And, and he only has a choice because we're able to stay square. And if you take a look at it, by square, I mean we have some choices right there. So, again, what started out at the beginning of the play was some combination blocks just to make sure that we didn't have penetration – Okay, so here's your combinations. No penetration, no penetration. We're going to have to eventually get off on the linebacker and then the linebacker so they don't run through. But to me and to the running back, now we let it roll and we see that guys are covered up at the point of attack 
and we're able to now have some options to go and find a way to make a cut. Derek can go front side, he can bounce. He's bounced on the corner so many different times where he's stiff-armed guys. And in this case, very rarely does he go out the back door, but you're gonna see now Peter get back up. Okay, the three techniques responsible for the B gap. Peter gets back up, he peeks, he plays a little peekaboo right there. And then now Derek is able to circle him up and you're gonna watch DeAndre Hopkins, okay, taking his man and running him off. And then there's your stiff arm, right? Making sure now that that thing right there is out in front of him. But DeAndre is running his guy off and finishing and then protecting and taking care of himself. Okay, very rarely you're gonna be able to run the football in from the 15 yard line, but that was a great example of us covering guys up, staying square, not dictating where the running back's gonna run by putting our butt in a hole or anything like that, but we stayed square and then now we let the runner run to daylight. Thanks for showing us that. Absolutely. That's awesome. We need a break and then we're back with more of the Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Mike Grable Show presented by Seat Geek. Tonight's epic Western spotlight spotlights Titans fans in London. There are people from Nashville, from all over Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Northern Alabama, all over North America, actually. But there were also people from all over Europe who showed up at the Admiralty, a pub on Trafalgar to see everybody there the night before the game and hold what amounted to a Titans pep rally. As you watch this epic Western spotlight, you will certainly need the subtitles. It was so loud in there, well, trust me, the audio couldn't get everything together. It will be well worth it. Enjoy this epic Western spotlight from Saturday night in London. What about it? How do you know? I guess we gotta go down there, right? Let's go. like Broadway. Look, it looked like inside of one of those uh, honky tonks. I'm telling you, to, to meet all those people from all those places, and they, they love you, they love the players, they know all kinds of stuff about us, and you just, you're just like, how can that be? But it really is something special to, to go over there and play in that game. And I, I know the three hours on Sunday wasn't what we wanted, but golly, that's just, to think the NFL is that big is staggering. And we understand what the magnitude is and, and the reach that we have, and it is amazing. And as much as I didn't want to sit there and stop at the airport and, and take pictures and sign whatever, I, I, I did. And, and probably maybe a few years ago, I, I wouldn't have. And, but, I, but I understand what, what this is and, and what our job is. And, you know, it's ultimately to win, but it's also to uh, grow this game, this great game that I've been a part of 
for since I was 12 years old and playing tackle football. And um, it, it's just we, we do have great fans, and I appreciate the, the, the support here, but also, you know, as we continue to go, grow the game uh, internationally. Good stuff. For the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek from the Bet MGM studio, continues after this. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. Now time for Mike Vrabel's favorite part of the show, a member of the Rack Pack. The official well, it's when you stop talking and then the Rat Pack takes okay, over. just hang on. I have to read this. This is official. A member of the Rack Pack, the official kids club of the Titans, has a question for Mike Vrabel. We say, kids, ask Coach Vrabel. Here is Brantley. Come on, Brantley. Hi, my name is Brantley. I'm 11 years old, and I wanted to know, who was your favorite player when you were growing up watching football? Let's go, Titans. Okay, Brantley. I love it. Are we still uh, taking memberships to the uh, oh, Rack absolutely. Pack? Okay, good. We, get, we got membership dues for that or no? Is it... I don't know. You know, I'm not aware well, of that. I'll, just... I'll get on that. So, Brantley, I was a Browns fan. I loved Bernie Kosar, and I loved and I liked the Cowboys because they were good. And, and I was a Tony Dorsett and a Randy White fan. Randy White was a defensive lineman. The Manster. Is... That was his nickname. Part man, part monster. The Manster. Manster. You know where he went to college? Maryland. Maryland. Her. Played linebacker but, there. And so I love Bernie Kosar. So I even threw sidearm like Bernie. Um, but you didn't like Clay Matthews and people like that? I would have thought. I, I, Clay Matthews, I did. You know, I like Michael Dean Perry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had a burger named after Michael Dean Perry at McDonald's. Is that right? Had, like sauteed onions and cheese whiz on it. He was the freezer. Northeast was Ohio he? favorite. Wasn't Michael Dean Perry? The refrigerator was William Perry, and Michael Dean Perry was the freezer, I think. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You mean I just, maybe. Well, I mean, maybe he was, but I just remember Michael Dean Perry. Yes, Michael Dean Perry. Very good player. Uh, we need to get a break, I'm told. Mike Vrabel's keys to success for this bye week. Some very specific things I think you'll be very interested. The Mike Vrabel Show continues after this. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek. Time now for the Nissan Keys to Success. Very specific plan for the bye week, starting with key number one, which is work on those fundamentals in all three phases. Well, just identifying the things that have continued to show up or not show up uh, over the course of the first six games. Like, why? why? Why are we not replacing our hands? Why are we not setting inside out? Or, you know, wh what has the, been the reoccurring themes, right? Settle down, figure out what that is, or, or what have we done well, and show them that. And, but right now, there's no scheme, there's no opponent. It's, it's slow things down, focus in on these fundamentals that maybe, you know, we, we, we get, went by too quickly on with the new installation or some scheme concept last week or the week before. All right. Fundamentals. Let's talk about the young players. You have a little more time this week, so work with the young guys. Yeah, normally those are the ones that have been, uh, you know, working on the show team and looking at a card, getting them to go play offense, getting them to play defense. and. You know, whether it's the younger players or some newer players to our to our football team, a, a Nick Petit Ferrer, uh, Travis Gibson, you know, a player that, that has been with us for six weeks, but, you know, that there's missed a lot of things, and now we can get back and we can continue to work with him. And Nick, you know, got some action last week, and, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get some more. Um, but, but getting those younger players to, to get back out there and, and letting them go play. All right, final key is a better understanding of overall concepts. I think you can, you know, doing your job and knowing what you're supposed to do can get you far, but to, to truly get to where we need to be and take advantage of, of bad football and not beating ourselves, we, we have to know the overall concept of the play and how your job fits into the entire scheme of the play and how you can make up for somebody else's mistake uh, by knowing the overall concept. So two more days of practice and then the players get four days off, is that Yes, right? yep. And you're headed to Foxborough for- I'm headed to Foxborough. For a very special weekend. Mike Vrabel, this weekend, being inducted into the Patriots Hall of Fame. From everybody here, we congratulate you. Uh, it, what an honor to, to be part of an NFL organization who did what yours did in that time and to be recognized as one of the best of the best. Uh, when you started playing this game, you were, when you were 12, 
Uh, that's what you shoot for, and we're all very happy that you're being recognized this way. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you. Everybody going? Everybody that uh, wants to. Yep, <laughs> we're, we're heading out on Saturday. So hey, Taking the family truckster? Yeah, the roadster. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? We'll, we'll be able to be up there with some family and friends and a lot of familiar faces and excited uh, to, to see everybody on, on Saturday, Saturday night, and, you know, have the uh, see the fans and, and enjoy that. Good stuff. Mike Vrabel with us every week on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks for joining us, everybody.